We're here at the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore and the major theme at this summit has been the competition, the, the new Cold War, some are calling it, between uh, the US and China. We want to talk now about the regional perspective on that. We have one of the leading lights in Indonesia's foreign policy community, Professor Dewi Fortuna Anwar. Thank you very much for speaking to DW. Um, the, an international tribunal ruled years ago that this 9 dash or 10 dash line that you referred to is not valid. Uh, that was in a case that was brought by the Philippines. Um, so, you know, an international tribunal has ruled that China's claims there have no standing, and yet China sticks by them. What's the Indonesian perspective on that? Like, that China just disregards this ruling? Well, Indonesia's position is very clear. You know, we stand by international law. We stand, particularly, you know, the, the, the implementation and respect for UNCLOS 1982. Uh, so we will continue to do that. Uh, within uh, the, the negotiations for the Code of Conduct in the South China Sea, I think, you know, the, the uh, undisputed position of UNCLOS 1982 should be the standing point, you know, the starting point also. So, but clearly, you know, China will not back down because it has this, it has power now. Uh, in the past, it claim the entirety of South China Sea, but it do not have the means to enforce that claim. Now China has the means to enforce a claim. Now what we hope for is that if China really stands by its uh, statement that it stands for peace, that it, it supports international law, that it wants to have uh, good relations with the rest, the rest of uh, the region, then I do hope that China will uh, stop its coercive policy uh, in the South China Sea because what China is doing is having a counterproductive uh, result. China wants strategic autonomy, China does not want external powers to come in. But the more that China is seen to be coercive towards the ASEAN claimants, particularly toward the Philippines, the more that the ASEAN countries will turn to outside powers for assistance. Uh, we know very well that now Indonesia, which is a non-aligned country, has, had, um, has revitalized and boosted its uh, joint military exercises with the United States. Uh, it's getting bigger and bigger. You know, the, the, it started with the Garuda Shield between Indonesia and the United States. Now it's become Super Garuda Shield, super Garuda Shield with dozens of countries participating, participating now. And this is just one of, you know, two issues. The Philippines, where the U.S. Philippines military alliance was in abeyance for, for a number of years. Now it's been revitalized. This is because of fear of China. So that the more that China is seen to be uh, strong muscling itself, in the region, the more that the countries in the region will feel threatened, and then the more that they will look to external powers to come to help. So, you know, this is a vicious circle. So if China is serious about not wanting external powers to keep sending in their warships, and they, if China doesn't want ASEAN member states to turn outside for, uh, for security uh, protection, then China should resist and desist in the South China Sea. So, yeah, and I mean, what we heard from the Chinese defense minister was really accusing the United States of meddling in this region, describing it like you describe it as, a, as an outside power. Ultimately, what you're saying is China has only itself to blame for the United States' involvement. Well, firstly, uh, I do not agree that the United States is a fully external power because the United States is an Indo-Pacific power as well, uh, and it has... Um, you know, security alliances with several countries in the region, uh, with Japan, with South Korea, with the Philippines, and with Australia. So, um, I, I I agree with uh, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Australia, that the United States is an, an Indo-Pacific country, uh, and, and ASEAN recognizes that. As you know, the United States is brought into the East Asia Summit as an Indo-Pacific country. Uh, but if China doesn't want uh, more and more. Uh, military involvement of the U.S. in the region at the practical level, at the operational level, then I think it is up to China, you know, to cool it a bit, to restrain, so that we'll go back to the period in the early 2000s when we had more dialogues and less threats in the South China Sea. Um, despite this increased cooperation with the United States, Indonesia is determinedly non-aligned. Do you see that there is a risk in this region, you know, if this trend continues, that you'll have some regional countries aligning strongly with the United States, others not, and that this could cause divisions in this region? 
Yeah, that is always the fear. I mean, uh, Southeast Asia was divided during the Cold War. Uh, some countries were anti-communist, other countries were communist, some supported the Vietnam War, others were neutral, you know. And we do not want to see the region being engulfed, engulfed, uh, engulfed again in proxy conflicts. Uh, because they might talk about the Cold War between the superpowers, but if it comes to Southeast Asia, it becomes a hot war. And we do not want to be used as a theatre. Uh, as a proxy, you know, for, for major power conflicts. And we do not want Southeast Asia to be divided again. We've worked so, lo so hard to keep uh, Southeast Asia cohesive, you know, within, uh, with ASEAN. So I, we hope that both the United States and China and other major powers will respect, will give that space to the region. And, but, but it's a dilemma, right? Because if the United States did, you know, ultimately pull out, if this kind of Cold War went away, but then there would be Chinese domination of the region. That would be the fear, right? Well, we do not accept any hegemony. Yeah, and, and, and that's why ASEAN, if the United States is serious about be, being an Indo-Pacific power, then it will continue to be engaged and will not treat Southeast Asia simply as a derivative of its China policy. Southeast Asia is important in its own right. It is located in a very strategic locations. The sea lines, the sea lines of communication pass through Southeast Asian waters, particularly a major of them, uh, some, several of them pass through Indonesian waters. If you want to go from the Pacific Ocean to the Indian Ocean, uh, all ships have to pass through Southeast Asia. So we are right in the middle of it. So, uh, so therefore that we want to manage relations with all uh, countries. We are always very open. Uh, Southeast Asia wants to engage with all countries, but it is in every country's best interest to keep Southeast Asia strong, resilient, and at peace. Professor Dewi Fortuna Anwar, thank you so much for speaking to DW today. Thank you very much, Richard. It's been my pleasure.